to see the King. I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me, and I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me, and I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me. I'm singing glory, hallelujah, Jesus lifted me. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus lifted me. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus lifted me. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus lifted me. I'm singing glory, hallelujah, and Jesus lifted me, and Satan had me bound, but Jesus lifted me. Uh, Satan had me bound, but Jesus lifted me. I said, Satan had me bound, but Jesus lifted I'm singing glory, hallelujah. Uh, Jesus lifted me. Oh, uh, well, I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me. Uh, and I'm so glad uh, that Jesus lifted me. I said, I'm so glad. So glad that Jesus lifted. I'm singing glory, hallelujah. And Jesus lifted me. Amen. I don't know, I was thinking back to youth group back when I was, you know, younger. You know, I'm still young, but younger. Um, you know, <laughs> I was thinking back, I was thinking about that song. I said, let me say that song. I remember that song. Amen. Amen. So good to see all of you that have come out on um, this afternoon. We thank, as always, those of you that are viewing us via live stream here um, on this afternoon. Out of all the places in Cyberland, you could have stopped by. We're glad that you stopped by to be here with us here um, on this afternoon. Um, we're still in the series of lessons that we've been doing on Sunday evening. Y'all been enjoying this so far? I hope so. I hope so. I hope so. Um, um, this week, this week we're going to be, um, as already been read, we'll be in Exodus chapter 13. Um, verses 17 and 18. We started out in Genesis in the, the very beginning, figuring out who created us, where we came from, what we were created for. Um, we've seen God as he's dealt with Noah and other individuals. We've seen him um, as he's been with Moses and made Moses discover who he was and just been with Moses all throughout his process. Because you can't mean to tell me in a river that's swarming with crocodiles and all these kind of things that he's just going to sail smoothly on down the river. But And God even had a way prepared for him once he got to where he was going. But now they are out in the wilderness. And, and the children of Israel thought they had made it because Pharaoh had let them go. But what they did not realize is that Pharaoh wasn't done with them yet. So we were reading about that here in Exodus chapter 13, verses 17 and 18. The Bible says, then it came to pass that when Pharaoh had let the people go, that God did not lead them by the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near, it was close by. For God said, at least perhaps the people change their minds when they see war and return to Egypt. So God led the people around by the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea, and the children of Israel went up in orderly ranks out of the land of Egypt. Now, we learn that there are two routes that the children of Israel could have taken. Now, the first route that they could have taken, as you know, would have been through the land of the Philistines. And, and this would have been the easiest route to take because it was a closer place for them to go to. And the second route took them through the wilderness by the Red Sea. Now, God wants them to take the harder route because he knows that if the children of Israel take the easier route that is close to Egypt, that if they, that's close to Pharaoh and his arm approaching, that they will run back to Egypt with their tails tucked between their legs. And, and this harder route will make it very difficult for them to try to return back, for them to try to run back. And when I was thinking about this, I couldn't help but to think that sometimes 
We try to take the easiest paths in life. But as Christians, when we follow God's word and we strive to do what's right, we know that many times in life it's going to lead us down some difficult roads. It's going to lead us down some, some, some bumpy roads from time to time. In fact, this reminded me of what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 and 14. Jesus said, enter by the narrow gate. For it is wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And here it is, there are many, not a few, there are many that go thereby. He said, but narrow is the gate and difficult, not easy, but difficult is the way that leads to life. And here it is, few there be that find it. Now, the children of Israel was an army now, and they have been armed for battle. And based on verse 18 that we just read, when it says that they went out in orderly ranks, according to the Hebrew lexicon, this means they were standing side by side in rows of five. They was getting up, they was in order. They was doing that thing correct. They were in legions. The Bible says in verse number 19, and Moses took the bones of Joseph with them, for he had placed the children of Israel under a solemn oath, saying, God will surely visit you and you shall carry up my bones from here with you. So he said, don't leave me back here with these crazy people. I want y'all, even, even though I ain't here, take my bones with you to a better place. This oath that I just mentioned is found in Genesis chapter 50, verses 25 and 26. It says, then Joseph took an oath from the children of Israel saying, God will surely visit you and you shall carry up my bones from here. So Joseph died being 110 years old, and they embalmed him, and he was put in a coffin in Egypt. Now, I find this interesting of how much importance the children of Israel took in a simple oath that they had to. Think about that. Here we have Joseph, who was embalmed, y'all, and stuck in an Egyptian coffin. He wasn't getting out of there by himself. And the children of Israel had managed to keep up with this body for 430 years. Hear that. I'm not talking about a couple weeks. I'm talking about these people kept up with the remains of him for 430 years. And now they are starting the process of keeping their oath by taking the bones with them. Now verses 20 through 22 says, So they took their journey from Succoth and encamped in Etham at the edge of the wilderness. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light so as to go by day and night. He did not take away the pillar of cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. So apparently God must have had some kind of connection with Joseph. Because the very thing that Joseph told them is what's going on. Joseph said, hey, if y'all getting up out of here, if y'all want some protection, you better take my bones with you. Well, uh, yeah, you better take me with you if you want the presence of God to lead you to where it is that you're going to go. So the children of Israel have encamped at the places and the first was Succoth and the second place that we said was Etham, which was at the edge of the wilderness. And the Lord loved his people. He loved his people and he was there to lead them. By day he guided them by a cloud and by night he led them by fire. Verse 22 shows that God's long suffering in that he did did not take away the cloud by day, nor the fire by night. And the same thing is true today, that God loved us, loves us just as much and just the same as he loved the children of Israel then. And that is that he will always be there for us and to give us comfort when we need it. Anybody know that to be true? Anybody know what it is to suffer within yourself at a time when don't nobody else know that you're suffering and you find that by trusting God that he's able to relieve that stress, that pain, the strain that you have on your life? Thank God that we have not a high priest that cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmity, but Jesus was in like manners tempted just as we are, but he did it without sin. Exodus chapter 14, verses 1 through 4 says this. It says, Now the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, that they turn and encamp between Pihoroth, between Migdal and the sea, opposite Baal Safan. 
You shall encamp before it by the sea. If y'all remember a couple months ago, I preached a sermon called God Fixed It. This is where we were. For God will say to the children of Israel, they are bewildered by the land. The wilderness has closed them in. Then I will harden Pharaoh's heart so that he will pursue them. And I will gain honor over Pharaoh and over all his army that the, here it is, listen, that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord and that they did so. We got to understand what he just said. That that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. Israel already knew that he was God. He just said, Egypt is going to know that I am God. They are going to know that even though you are trying to bring my people, trying to keep them in slavery, trying to keep them captive, I'm going to show you just what kind of God I am. I'm going to do so much. I'm going to test your heart. I'm going to kill your children. I'm going to send plagues. I'm going to turn your water into blood. I'm going to do all of this stuff to deliver my people and then when you think you got them between a rock and a hard place I'm gonna make a way in the rock and the hard place now through that we can see that God had a plan and let me tell you any plan that God has will not fail look at somebody and say God's plans don't fail now since God knows the heart of man and he knew he knew that when Pharaoh came and saw the children of Israel camped at the river that he would think they became confused and didn't realize that they were trapped and that he could just go out there and get them. That's exactly what God wanted him to think. Let's go start at verse 5. He says, now it was told the king of Egypt that the people had fled and the heart of Pharaoh and his servants was turned against the people and they said, why have we done this, that we have let Israel go from serving us? So he made ready his chariot and took his people with him. Also, he took 600 choice chariots and all the chariots of Egypt with captains over every one of them. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and he pursued the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out with boldness, the Bible says. So the Egyptians pursued them, all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh, his horsemen and his army, and overtook them, capping by the sea beside P. Herod before Belsephon. So once again, we see Pharaoh changing his mind again. He could keep his mind settled on anything. Changing his mind yet again, once again, but this time the children of Israel were gone. They just couldn't seem to fathom the thought of losing all their free labor. Who going to iron our clothes? Who going to wash the dishes? Who going to take care of the kids? Who going to do all? We just let go of all that free labor. It doesn't seem to take them long before they catch up with them where they were camped by the sea, just where God told them to stay at. And the Pharaoh is like Satan, always pursuing, never giving up, always coming after you. Every opportunity he gets, man, oh, I didn't get him that time. Let me go and get him this time. But let me tell you, child of God, that even in your day-to-day -day life, when you feel yourself that you are stuck between a rock and a hard place, you feel like Pharaoh is drowning down on you. You feel like you're faced with the Red Sea. You got two mountains on either side of you. You got the army behind you that if you would just stand still and trust God and believe that if he brought me here, God has already prepared a way to bring me out. If I'm here, I must be here for a reason. So while I'm here, I'm going to trust God for I know that he is able to deliver me. Beginning at verse number 10, the Bible says, and when Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes and beheld the Egyptians were marching after them. So they were very afraid. You ought not be afraid when God is with you, church. It said, and they were afraid, and the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. Then they said to Moses, because there were no graves in Egypt, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? Why have you dealt so with us to bring us up out of the land of Egypt? Is this not the word that we told you in Egypt saying, let us alone that we might serve the Egyptians? Listen at this. This crazy talk right here. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. 
And we know that were our own ancestors, that when they were brought over here on slave ships, that there were many of them that thought it was more noble to jump into the sea and die than to be somebody's slave, than to be somebody's servant. So here's where we come over the children of Israel. When they saw Pharaoh's army, you know, they kind of got shaken in their boots. You know, they kind of kind of got a little scared. Here's the thing I don't understand. First of all, didn't they just not see God do ten plagues? They were there. They witnessed all of that happen. Had they not seen the cloud and the fire? I didn't put it up there. Somebody had to do it. They had armor and they were ready for battle. Why were they scared of Pharaoh and his army? After all they had been through and seen, they apparently still lacked the most important thing, faith in God. Faith in God. Now, it's easy for me to say this standing here in this building. But I would like to think that if I were there and had seen that all that God had done, that I would have enough faith to trust God not to fear Pharaoh and his army. That's exactly what God teaches us in the New Testament. Matthew chapter 10 verse 28. He says, and do not fear those that are able to kill the body. But rather fear him that is able to destroy both the soul and the body in hell. Now the children of Israel had not grasped this concept. Notice what they do. Number one, they cry out to God. Number two, they asked Moses, have you brought us all the way out here to die in the wilderness? Get smart with Moses, you know. Number three, why have you brought us out of Egypt? When y'all crying for 400 years to get out, why you ask me why I brought y'all out of Egypt? See, crazy talk, foolishness. Number four, did we not tell you to leave us alone that we might serve the Egyptians? Crazy talk, number four. And number five, we would have been better off staying in Egypt than dying out here. Verse 13 and 14 says, And Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he shall accomplish for you this day. Here it is. This is my shout right here. He said, For the Egyptians that you see today, you shall see them again no more forever. Can I tell y'all something, church? Sure. When God deal with the issue, that issue been dealt with. When God solves a problem for you, that problem has been solved. I never knew anything that Jesus put his hands on that somebody else had to go behind and fix. When God does the work, God does not do a partial job on you, but God does a complete work. The Bible says that he that has begun a good work in you shall complete that very same now Moses tries to get the children of Israel to calm down chill out y'all and really think about the situation and think about God number one don't be afraid don't be afraid don't fear number two stand still and see the salvation of the Lord which he's going to show you today number three you'll never see the Egyptians Again, and number four, the Lord will fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. Not P-I-E-C-E, because we all, most of us got a peace. I ain't talking about that peace. You know, Tyler, Tyler Perry said, peace was still, peace is still, peace is made of steel, you know? But I'm talking about peace. <laughs> I got to go home and watch that. This is... <laughs> now this is something good for us to remember church we ought not be afraid of enemies and we should strive above all things to put our trust in God knowing that he's fighting for us and that in the end he's going to give us the deliverance that we'll stand in the need of now here is where we learn about the miracle of the parting of the Red Sea First of all, God tells Moses to tell the Israel, tell the children of Israel to go forward. And then Moses is to raise up this stick that he found somewhere over the sea. 
And God, the Bible says, bring up a strong east wind. And the Bible says that it blows all that night and parts the Red Sea and makes it dry enough. Just think about this, y'all. When they got to the other side, they didn't even have mud between their toes. They got over there, and we also, he also protects the children of Israel while the sea is being parted. The water didn't fall down on them. The angel of God moves behind, the Bible says, it moves behind the children of Israel. Listen, it gets between them and the, I'm so glad that when I'm going through the issues and the difficulties of this life, and even though it seems like I'm going to succumb to the things that are going on around me, and it may look like that thing is gaining up on me, it doesn't notice the God that's standing in between. He's standing in between. God, from the beginning, has been in the business of deliverance. Since the beginning, God has been in the business of showing people just how mighty and powerful he is. I don't know of no other proclaimed God that has done anything like our God. No other God has done. Buddha, he ain't never part of no water. Feel like he drunk a lot of it, but he never, he never parted no water. Our God is unlike any other God. I'm glad in closing. I clo I'm so glad I was, I was, I, when I was, um, um, over, um, this past, um, when I was in Athens and I got to stand on what they call the, um, in the Acropolis where the apostle Paul stood, um, where the apostle Paul said that he was walking through and Paul said that he saw an inscription where it said to the unknown God. And, and y'all, I, I got a picture of it. I actually got to stand in this place. And when you're standing here, you can see literally the entire city of Athens. And Paul is standing on this rock. And you got all of these religious teachers, these, these mighty men, these men of knowledge that are standing before you. And he had the strength, he had the gall to stand before them and tell them about a God whom they ignorantly, where he had to be at the nerve to tell them, y'all think y'all got it right, but you actually got it all wrong. And for anybody that's here, for anybody that's watching, me I want to tell you if you try Jesus you'll find out the man is all right you'll find out that he can make a difference in your life you'll find out that he can clean you up he can make you new he can give you a brand new start if you'll surrender your life to him the same God that saved yesterday is the same God that's in the saving business to say today the same God that delivered Moses and the children of Israel out of the Red Sea from the hand of Pharaoh is the same God that's going to deliver you from your hurts, from your traumas, from your problems, from the things that you are dealing with. He is still the same God yesterday, today, and even forevermore. And I'm glad that he has not changed. He may have changed in certain aspects. I wish I had a relationship with God like Moses did. I wish I did. I wish I could talk and hear God talk back to me. That would be pretty cool. Might scare me the first time, but you know, that would be pretty cool. But can I tell you something? When you walk with Jesus and when you trust God and when you are submitted to him, he may not talk back to you. But after a while, if you just pay attention to the things that are going on, you will see how God begins to give you the answers that you were standing in the need of. Man, it scares you sometimes how some stuff be happening and how some stuff just go on. But let me tell you, he's showing us even today, I am the same God. Put your trust in me. Believe in me. And even though Pharaoh is running behind you, even though he got chariots, he got horses, he got all of this stuff and it's frightening you. You got terror on the inside. Don't fear. Just stand still. Don't run away from him. I know you're scared. I don't, don't run away from him. Stand still and watch me work. Just stand still. And even right now, as we are still lingering in the cusp of a pandemic, God is saying, you know what? Just stand still. God is saying, you know what? Just, just stand still. Stop trying to know everything. Stop trying to know why this happened this way. Why the black cow eat green grass and give white milk. Guess what? You don't know, but God got a reason for everything that he does. And as we sang the song earlier, we're going to understand it better. 
by and by. We're going to understand it better. Why in the world could we not have gone through the land of the Philistines? You are going to understand it better. By and by. Lord, we could have been there today. You're going to understand it better. By and by. Something that could have, a trip that should have took four days. Forty years. Forty years. A trip that should have took four days turned into 40 years. Why did that have to happen? Because even though I done brought y'all out of Egypt, I still ain't got Egypt out of you. Your eyes are looking at Canaan, but y'all mind is still back there in Egypt. And God said, you know what? I don't want to take y'all to a promised land and y'all still have a slave mentality. And get there and mess up what it is that I have for you. And I thank God that he holds us back sometimes. I thank God that sometimes when we have a desire to go forward and do certain things, that God will put up roadblocks. That God will make you take detours. That God will make you come to a dead end sometimes. And you have to turn around and try to figure out where you are. Because guess what? You don't know what's laying ahead, but God knows what's lying ahead. God knows the, plan, the plans that Pharaoh has put out. God knows the plans that the devil has put out for us. And guess what? God is not going to let you be overtaken by Satan. God is is going to give you the things that you need. Now, it's up to you whether you get in it and get what you need. But God is going to give us the things that we need so that just like the children of Israel, when we are faced with our own Red Seas, you got the Red Sea in front of you. You got the children, of, you got the Egypt behind you trying to chase you. And then you got two rows of mountains on either side of you. Can't go nowhere. Can't get out. Can't crawl out. Can't run out. Can't sneak out. Can't do anything. God said, just stay right there. God, how are we going to get out of here? Walk towards the water. What? Lord, it's, it's how are we going to get? Just walk toward. I got it. I got it. Stop trying to know what I'm going to do and just do what I told you to do. You remember when you was a kid and your mama told you to do something? You said, why was it? Because I told you to do it. And as we're going to get into in a few weeks in our study, once we get to the books of Numbers and Deuteronomy, we'll see that there were a lot of things that God told the children of Israel. There were a lot of commands, there were a lot of rules, a lot of regulations that God gave them. And to us reading that stuff, it seemed kind of crazy. You can't wear linen and wool at the same time. I mean, what would have got me is not even shellfish. I'd be, I'd be on my way. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, but, but, but thank God. But, but we'll understand, and, and the whole purpose of God instituting all of that is God saying, you know what, I delivered you. Now I want to see if y'all are going to be obedient unto me, if you're going to obey what it is that I command you. But I thank God that even today, for those of you that may be watching, for those of you that may be here with us, I thank God that even today, that when we find ourselves better down with sin, the devil is chasing us down, trying to beat us down, trying to overtake us, trying to do away with us. I'm glad that we serve a God that is able to deliver us from all of our trials, from all of our situations, from all the things that we are dealing with. We serve a God that is more than able. So maybe you're here, maybe you're watching us. And you stand in need of God's deliverance. You stand in need of, of coming into a, a saving relationship with them. I'm it's so glad it warms my heart to know that we have people that watch us from all over the country. We got people watching us in foreign countries. And it's good to know that people are able to watch us. And they're able to perceive and to understand God's will for their life. And as you stated earlier, you have people that are not asking what they need to do to be saved. folk, And they are doing that. And we still got to realize that even though now that we are dealing with with the things that we are dealing with. There are still souls that are in need of saving. There are still people out there that don't know Jesus in the pardon of their sins. And we got to make sure that we continue to hold up the bloodstained banner of Jesus Christ. That men, women, boys, and girls will know that Jesus is still in the soul saving business. Maybe you're here, maybe you're watching. You desire a relationship with Jesus. My brother, my sister, come. Here in his word, the, um, that he, that here in his word, the Bible says in Romans chapter 10 and verse number 17. So then faith come by 
by hearing, hearing by the word of God. After you heard it, you believe the same, repent of your sins, confess Christ as your savior. Be buried with him in baptism, allow him to add you to his body, and you remain faithful unto death. He'll give you a crown of life that will never fade away. If you're here, if you're watching us, and you're standing in the need of prayer, comment, message us, let us know how we can pray for you. The prayers of the righteous, they truly availeth much. If you're subject to the invitation, you have that opportunity now uh, to come, Mr. Gillespie. We stand and sing the song of invitation. I'm in the way, the bright and shining way.